What happens when a British falconer tries an American falconry exam? As we continue to get cases of bird flu here in the UK, I've been trying to think of different things that I can make videos out of. And it's really not easy because they are the real star, but it's just not safe to get them out and fly them and train them at the moment. So I recently found an American falconry exam online. Here in the UK, legally anybody can become a falconer, but in America you need a license and you have to take an exam to get that license. So I'm going to put my British falconry knowledge to the test. When I first scrolled through, I realised it's a huge exam and it's split up into different sections. So in this video, I'm going to take the general, which is the first part of the exam. If you would like to see me take the other parts, then leave a comment below. And to pass this exam, you need 80%. But this is for beginners and I'm not a beginner, so I thought I should have some sort of forfeit. So I googled really cheesy quotes and I picked an awful one. And if I don't get 80% on this exam, I'm going to post that to my personal Facebook with no explanation. Also, the mock exam had all of the answers right there on it underneath all of the questions. So I got Josh to put them all in a PowerPoint so that I couldn't cheat. So wish me luck and let's see how this goes. Question one. Hawks belonging to the genus Accipita are known as broadwings, longwings, shortwings, all of the above. Starting off quite easy then. So broadwings, they are the buzzards, longwings are the falcons, and the shortwings are the hawks. So the Accipitas tend to be the shortwings. So C. I got it right. Which of the following is generally true regarding male raptors? First to return from migration, we choose the nesting area, provides most of the food after the young have hatched. Or D, all of the above. I would say all of the above for this one. Correct. A raptor tends to reach full size at one year of age. When they leave the nest, at six months of age, at five years of age. If you have not raised a bird of prey yourself, then you won't realize how fast they grow. They grow that fast, it looks like a different bird every single day. So when they leave the nest is usually when they're fully grown, so B. Correct. Which species of raptor does not exhibit sexual dimorphism? So sexual dimorphism is where there's physical uh, differences in appearance between the male and the female. So kestrel, red-tailed hawk, peregrine, none of the above are correct. Which species of raptor does not exhibit sexual dimorphism? So you could argue that all three of these exhibit sexual dimorphism because the females are quite a bit larger than the males. But I guess that's not what they're talking about. One of the answers is none of the above. Uh, this one's a confusing one. So a kestrel does exhibit sexual dimorphism. Uh, the males have a blue head uh, and a blue tail uh, and sort of bluish on their wings as well whereas the females are all brown but with the red-tailed hawks both the males and the females apart from the size have the same plumage uh, and the same with the peregrines so I would have said that kestrels do show sexual dimorphism but the question is asking which do not so unless because it's an American exam they're talking about American kestrels, which American kestrels are the same as male and female. Maybe that's what they're talking about. So I'm going to say D, none of the above. Okay, that's correct. A relaxed hawk is likely to preen, raise and tuck one foot, rouse, all of the above. Uh, all of the above. Preening is where they're, they're cleaning their feathers. They raise all their feathers on their body and took up one foot when they're nice and relaxed and arouse is where they ruffle themselves up and shake all their feathers. So all of the above is correct. Which of the following does not describe a portion of a raptor's wing? Coverts, allula, allula, however you want to say it, say and secondaries. So the say is part of the face, it's the, the fleshy bit that's between the feathers of the head uh, and the beak. So I'm going to say see, say. Which of the following term does not fit with the others? Talon, train, tarsus, hallux. 
So three of these are talking about sort of the foot area, so the talons, uh, obviously at the end of their toes, how they catch their prey. The hallux is sort of the, the back talon, almost what would be the thumb. Um, the tarsus is the sort of bones, the area in the foot. Uh, and the train is actually the tail, so which of them doesn't fit? Uh, the train, because it's the tail. Yep. Which factor is most important in determining what raptor any falconer should fly? Appropriateness of raptor housing. Availability of prey suitable for the raptor. Proximity to other falconers flying similar raptors, none of the above. So it's going to be B, availability of prey suitable for that raptor. Um, there's no point getting a hawk if there's nothing to hunt with that hawk anywhere near you, uh, but there are things that you could hunt with a falcon. So you have to pick the right bird for what you can hunt close by to you, or where you have permission to hunt. So it's going to be B. Yep. The terms passage, imprint and chamber describe the legal status, the legal status of the falconer, the nature of the muse area in which a raptor is kept, how the raptor was raised, none of the above. So this is how the raptor was raised. C. Yep. All raptors include species of the order or orders Stringiforms, Falconiforms, Accipitrade. Both A and B. So an Accipitrade is a family, whereas the Stringiforms and Falconiforms are orders. So both A and B is correct. Desertion of the nest by adult raptors is most likely to occur just prior to egg laying, during late incubation, during hatching, just prior to fledging. So most likely just prior to egg laying. It's unlikely that a bird will leave her eggs once she's already um, laid them. Uh, if she's disturbed, she'll uh, try to defend them. Um, but if there's lots of disturbances when she's still just picking a nest, um, then she'll go and choose somewhere else so it's more safe for her eggs before she lays them. So A. Yep. True or false? Mm. If the first clutch of eggs is destroyed soon after being laid, many hawks and falcons will lay a second clutch. So that's true. It's called double clutching. And it's actually been used uh, in conservation, uh, quite famously by the uh, Mauritius Kestrel. They were near to extinct, uh, and there was, I think, only one breeding pair left in the wild, or very few breeding pairs left in the wild. Um, and a biologist uh, took one clutch and incubated themselves and there was uproar because everybody knew that they were endangered and so they were questioning why he was taking their eggs when they're so um, valuable uh, and it was so that he could double clutch them so he took the eggs and incubated them so that he could release them back into the wild and whilst he was doing that the parents laid a second clutch so you could double clutch your birds true a falconer is most likely to encounter a brancher of species of hawk or falcon in January, March, January, March, January, March, June, October. So a few raptors breed in January or October. They tend to breed around the March time, maybe a little bit later than that. So they will be sort of starting to branch uh, by June. So I'm going to say C June. Correct. There is an observed trend of young avian predators, particularly falcons, shortly after leaving the care of an adult to begin taking quarry considerably larger than the norm for adults of the same species. This is probably because the youngsters are still growing and need more food than adults, the young birds are stronger and can outcompete their elders for larger, more nutritious prey, more skill is required to catch a smaller bird, all of the above. So when they are out and hunting by themselves, of course they need to build up fitness, but they don't really need more food to help grow because they they should be fully grown by that point. The younger birds are stronger and can outcompete their elders. Uh, no, it's actually really kind of difficult for the birds to hunt. It takes a lot of practice, and so the the older, more experienced birds are actually more likely to take larger, more able to take larger prey if they wanted. So more skill is required to catch smaller birds. Uh, is probably that one because the way that the falcons hunt is they stoop so they'll fly higher up than whatever they're uh, hunting and then they will fold their wings away and stoop down um, so there's quite a lot of precision uh, precision involved in that uh, so I'm going to say C is correct 
I've not heard of that before though, that's an interesting fact. The bird most likely to breed naturally in captivity is a passage bird, an imprint ias, a raptor parent raised ias, all of the above. Uh, parent reared birds are most likely to naturally breed in captivity. Uh, if we imprint birds, we can do something called artificial insemination, which is how we make hybrid falcons. Um, but naturally, uh, a parent reared, uh, so C. Correct. Male and female hawks can be determined in most species by the faster speed of the females, the faster speed of the males, the larger size of the females, the larger size of the males. So females can be up to a third larger than the males, so it's C, the larger size of females. It's actually where the term tearsel comes from uh, when referring to male falcons. C, yeah. Falconiforms in immature plumage appear to be smaller than when they become adults, larger than when they become adults, the same size as, them as when they become adults, larger or smaller than the adults depending on how well they were fed as nestlings and on how successful they were as hunters after leaving the nest. Okay. So, this is a strange one. Um, weirdly, I'm going to say B, larger than when they become adults. It's actually really common for juvenile birds to have longer feathers uh, than the adults. Uh, nobody really knows why they start to lose length in their feathers as they start to mature, uh, but I think the most uh, common belief is that they need uh, that extra length because the youngers, uh, the younger falcons, um, younger birds of prey, they're not that good at taking care of themselves, uh, they're not the best at preening, um, and so they will often break the tips, and so by having longer feathers, when they do break the tips, they've still got a working length of feather. And as they mature and learn how to take care of their feathers a bit better, they just don't need that extra length. So I'm going to say larger than when they become adults, B. Oh, thank goodness for that. I really didn't know if I was going to be right on that one. In Buto, Parabuto and Accipiter, so Buto being buzzards, Parabuto, Harris hawks and Accipiter are other hawks, uh, molting of the primary wing feathers starts with the innermost primary, ornithologically number one, and proceeds to sequence to the outermost primary, ornithologically number ten, starts with the number ten and proceeds inwards to number one, starts with the primary number four and proceeds in both directions, proceeds in an irregular fashion, but the same sequence on each wing. I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say it's, I've seen birds fly through the molt uh, and they appear to have gaps in the middle of their wings. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say A but I really don't know. Um, this is not something I've ever, ever paid attention to, to be honest. No, it was there. okay. Well, that was lucky. <laughs> Haggard's adults are not taken for falconry because they may be too old and might die soon. They are too difficult to train. They are nature's breeding stock and should be allowed to function as such. They will only take the prey species they have specialised to catch in the wild. Now, a haggard is uh, a falcon in its full adult plumage. Um, with most falcons, they tend to reach this stage uh, one to even two years old. Um, so to say that they might be too old and might die soon is just um, not accurate. You can't really tell how old they are. Um, after they've reached full adult plumage. Um, too difficult to train, uh, I wouldn't say that's a thing. Uh, they're nature's breeding stock, so we'll leave them in the wild. Um, at least they would in America uh, to produce uh, more wild offspring. Um, natural selection, if they've managed to reach it to adulthood, then they should be able to pass on their genes. So C, nature's breeding stock. True or false? Hawks and falcons hunt by sight and hearing. Their sense of smell is not well developed. 
air, or is it true? It's not true for all birds of prey, but for the hawks and the falcons, they're virtually agnostic. Um, I mean, they don't really have a sense of smell. Um, but there are birds like the vultures that have got a really keen sense of smell, uh, and that helps them to find the carrion that they're uh, looking to eat. Uh, but for hawks and falcons, true. Yep. One is most likely to find the seer on the head of the raptor, on the feet of the raptor, on the wings, around the breast area of a raptor. Uh, well, I said this earlier on, it's the fleshy skin bit between the beak and the feathers, so A on the head of the raptor. The tarsus of a raptor is part of the bird's wing, leg, tail, head. Uh, it's part of the legs, so they have uh, tassels and carpels. Uh, the carpels are sort of our wrist area and the tassels are uh, in our legs, so the yeah, sort of ankle area. B. Yeah. A bird's train is its head, wing, foot or tail. So the train is the tail and the two middle feathers of the bird's tail is called the deck feathers. Uh, and that's where most people attach a tail mount. Yep. The, oh, okay. The deck feathers are the central pair of tail feathers. Yeah, I literally just said that. The feather tuft on top of the falcon's hood. No. The feathers used in imping a broken tail or wing feathers. The row of feathers which run down the wing above the primaries and secondaries. No, it's A, the central pair of tail feathers. A good indication of completed growth of in Ias is when the bird is full sunned, hard penned, both A and B, B but not A. So full sunned is uh, sort of describing the end of the molt, it's when all their feathers have finished growing. Uh, hard penned is when these feathers uh, have had the blood sort of drained out of them. So if you look and the quill of the feathers is sort of blue, um, then that's not hard penned because it's still got blood inside because they still need to grow. Um, so the answer would be both C, both A and B. Yep. Your bird is likely to mantle when in active pursuit of quarry, when standing over quarry, both A and B, neither A nor B. Mantling is where the birds will sort of drop their wings and hold their wings around their food to hide it from other birds. Um, also where the term mantelpiece comes from because that surrounds your fire, uh, whereas the bird is surrounding its food. So B when standing over quarry. Yep. A bird that is very comfortable with its surroundings and has a full crop is likely to gorge, hack, rouse, wrangle. So gorge is where they fill their crop, hack is uh, sort of an exercising term where you let them out to fly, rouse is where they ruffle up all their feathers, and wrangle I believe is like grit um, and stones and things that you can feed the bird that um, they don't digest, it just sort of sits in the crop um, that they then cast up um, to help clean it out. Uh, but a bird comfortable with its surroundings will sit and rouse. A bird is likely to preen following a bath when it is content both A and B, neither A nor B. Uh, a and B, uh, they'll often sit, uh, they'll often go and have a bath uh, after they've flown or in the sun, uh, jump back up on their perch and they'll have a good preen. Um, and when they're really comfortable, when they've got a well-manned bird, um, they'll sit and preen as well. So both A and B. Yep. Cast means the act of dis gorging a pellet of fur, feathers, bones, or of three, two falcons flown together, to hold or wrap a hawk so as to prevent movement, all of the above. Cast is one of those words in falconry that has loads of different terms. Uh, like the word set in uh, normal English, you can uh, set something down on the table, uh, you can have a set of multiple things, um, concrete will set. Um, so cast is like another one of those. So cast actually means all three of these. Um, so a bird will cast up a pellet um, of the things that it can't digest. Um, you can fly a cast, which is where you fly two birds together. Um, and you can cast a bird to do things like cope its beak, so you restrain it. So all of the above. The medieval falconer was most likely to enseam his or her bird 
when it was hood shy, immediately after capturing the bird, when the bird was too fat, when the bird was sharp set. So enseam is where you sort of reduce the weight of the bird, uh, getting it ready to fly. So when the bird was too fat, see. Oh, and that's it. Well, that wasn't too difficult. Okay, so I had to guess a couple, but I still got 100%, which means no cheesy posts for me. If you're a beginner, uh, then hopefully we covered something useful in that for you. I'm still working on a couple projects that I can't wait to announce and share with you, especially my regular watchers. So if you did enjoy that and you would like to see more falconry and bird of prey related content, then make sure to subscribe. It's free and it really helps me and my birds out. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching.